Viewer discretion is advised. I gave him food from time to time, figuring it was the least I could do. Water, too. Those in the area called him the Elephant Man. A terrible thing to say to another human being, but it was not an inaccurate way to describe him. Besides, if you saw some guy who had what seemed to be elephant feet and was horrifyingly obese, you'd say the same. The world is definitely a cruel place. He would often be begging for money, food, and the usual stuff as he couldn't move properly and therefore couldn't work. I would see him every night when throwing out the trash from the local diner I worked at. I'd wave over at him from across the street and he'd wave back with difficulty. At first, I was appalled by his appearance, but then I just felt bad for the guy. What kind of country do we live in that would allow someone to live like this? The guy was wasting away on a street corner, slowly dying and with no one to care for him. He didn't speak much when I talked to him, opting to slowly nod or shake his head as a response. It made sense considering he was most likely weakened from lack of food and drink and the assortment of diseases he must have. Still, I fancied him a nice man. So, for months I'd bring him leftovers from the diner and chat with him for a little while on my walk home. I like to think he appreciated it. And then one day, I saw him talking to a man in a lab coat. After that, he was gone. No trace of him to speak of. I asked around to see if anybody saw where he had wandered off to. But all I got in response was, who? It's like everyone forgot who he was, vanished from reality. Made me question my sanity for a bit. Even now, every night when I walk outside to throw out the trash, I look for him. I hope he's doing okay. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Safe Class Object SCP-4409. SCP-4409, also known as the Elephant Man, is an extremely elderly and obese African male. He has numerous elephantine features, including a proboscis similar to that of an elephant's trunk. This proboscis has also been surgically modified to have ivory valves. These valves allow 4409 to play music much like how a trumpet would sound. Furthermore, 4409's ears have been drastically altered to nearly four times larger than normal. Despite their size, 4409 can exhibit fine-tuned control over them as well as his proboscis. 4409's skin has taken on a chalky gray hue and has large canines that resemble tusks. Due to some sort of bodily modification, his lower body has been greatly enlarged. This has caused his legs, and especially feet, to become incredibly large, resembling those of elephants. These engorged feet have given 4409 painful gout, for which he is being medicated. 4409 was discovered through monitored police chatter and taken in by the Foundation just outside of St. Louis, USA. Hello and welcome to Site 66, 4409. Apologies for the quick change of scenery for you, but I can assure you that you'll be more comfortable here than on the side of the road. Today you'll undergo a medical examination and I'll interview you. To begin with, I'll save you the trouble, doctor. You want to know why I look like the bastardization of an elephant, right? I wasn't going to put it like that, but yes, how did you end up so disgusting? Is that what you're about to say? I'm not here to make judgments on your appearance. Please continue. I'm all ears. No pun intended. Why don't you just explain? 4409 glared at Dr. Crossley. I wasn't always like this. I used to be human, like to think I still am, but clearly that isn't the case anymore. What happened? Given the kind of operation your organization undertakes, I'm sure that you're aware of Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting? I can't say that I am. I've heard of it in passing, but why don't you enlighten me about the details? Well, as the name implies, it was, and I guess still is, a circus. I was hired by Mr. Fuller to be a laborer of sorts. I've seen curious and disturbing creatures and people he had under his employ. From humans with multiple arms to children with blackened eyes who could predict your death, I've seen it all. Even a glass vial that contained a diseased piece of flesh that supposedly could transform into anything that it touched into masses of flesh as well. Crazy, isn't it? Anyway, he read in the newspaper one day about the elephant man and laughed. Then says he could do a much better job at creating his own. Hang on a second, elephant man. You don't mean the one from the 1800s. He died 200 years ago. How old are you? Much too old, I'm afraid. So what happened next? I went through things, things I wish I could forget. 
I wasn't born this way, you see. I was hired by Mr. Fuller as a laborer when I was still young and fit. Despite all the weird exhibits Fuller had, life was pretty normal for me. I mean, it was a circus. You'd expect to see freaks here and there, so I just paid them no mind. That all changed when he heard of Joseph Merrick, the elephant man. Took a glance at the newspaper, then at me, back to the newspaper, and scoffed. Psh, why, he barely looks like an elephant at all. I can do better than that, he said, all the while looking at me with that wicked smile of his. And so I was chosen to become the new and improved elephant man. And you agreed to it? Hell no. I was anxious and scared when he looked at me like that. He didn't even spare much time to think about it. Right then and there, he put down the papers and snapped his fingers. Several burly men showed up at the door immediately. He had some of his men to fetch him his tools, and the rest forced me onto an operating table and strapped me down. I struggled and screamed as hard as I could, but it didn't matter. They dragged me into the ringmaster's tent, where many of them freaks were around. I looked at them, begged for help, but they only looked at me pitifully. Some even pretended to not see me. Can't blame them, even though I was angry that time. They were probably just as helpless as I was. I can still remember that gleeful smile on his face as he traced his fingers over tools, scalpels, and odd machinery. I'm guessing he... yes. Don't worry, my boy. I'm going to make you a star. Together, we'll make money. You are going to earn me a fortune. I can see it, he said gleefully. Somehow, he was able to mold the flesh on my face like it was clay. Said something about it being an old family secret technique. He squeezed my lip and nose together and pulled them out into a foot-long trunk. All done, without any form of anesthesia. Not even a drink for you to numb the pain? Yep, hurt like hell, though not as much as what he did to me next. He took one of those tools, and it had to be magic of some kind. He used them to rip and tear at my flesh and bones, grafted my nose and mouth to make this trunk. I've been shot and stabbed before, and both of those combined didn't compare to the amount of pain he put me through, especially when he drilled those holes and surgically stitched these valves onto my face. To top it all off, he changed my skin from black to gray, and I was done. Great success, he declared. After that, whenever I looked into a mirror, I just... 4409 began sobbing. They remained silent for a moment. I'm sure I'm safe in assuming that you weren't the only person Mr. Fuller experimented on. Oh, God no. For years I traveled along with him in his circus, forced to play this blasted music from my trunk, put on display and was humiliated by the general public who wanted to see the new and improved Elephant Man, with more elephant than Joseph Merrick being the selling point. It was horrible, but bearable, compared what Mr. Fuller had me do in my off time. Those were pure tortures. And that would be? Whenever Mr. Fuller became inspired to create something new, he had me watch as he tore those poor souls apart and rearranged their bodies. I was forced to listen to their screams and pleas for help. They looked to me for comfort or to beg me to do anything other than standing there. I remember each and every single last word they spoke. Every last image I was forced to witness. Guess I finally knew how it was for the freaks that stood around when I was under Fuller's little surgery. I'm sorry that this happened to you. It's fine now. I've accepted it, I think. Soon after that, everything else just happened. The tusks kept growing and the weight just kept on coming until I came down with the gout. Mr. Fuller is a businessman, a capitalist. Unless you make money, he doesn't give a toss about you. Hell, he even went the extra mile to express how much was his disdain when his product doesn't turn a profit. Did he do something more to you? You bet he did, that vile man. My medical upkeep was getting expensive. It outweighed... 4409 paused and glared at Dr. Crossley. Won't go there. Please continue. It outweighed the profit that I could bring to him. He mutilated me, hobbled me. I was already unprofitable, but being the kind of man Fuller was, vile and insecure, he rendered me incapable of earning a single buck as anything than a freak. If you couldn't move, how did you escape? I didn't. They let me go. Seems like wishful thinking to say that Fuller's dead, but he's not running the circus anymore. His successors were determined to make the circus a better place, and said any of us that wanted to go free may do so. Most of them stayed since they had nowhere else to go. I didn't have anywhere to go either, but I left anyway. After having to do what I was told for so long, I wanted to do something on my own, just because I could. And well, you see how it turned out.
but it was nice to have that brief period when I was free. You've had a rough and unusual life. It took me decades to understand why Mr. Fuller would make me do such a thing. I laughed when I realized that my true purpose was, well, other than being a freak, care to venture a guess, Dr. Crossley? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know his reasoning. It is because, Dr. Crossley, an elephant does not forget. When everything is said and done, when Fuller's circus is gone for good, I will never forget it. I think I hate that most of all. Well, here in the Foundation, we'll provide you counseling and therapy should you need it. Yeah, that's about what I expected, but it's fine. I've come to terms with those painful memories now. There was this kid who would look after me when I was living in the streets, helped to remind me that there are still good in people. Heh, <laughs> what's wrong? Nothing, I'm just thinking how your organization is the opposite of Mr. Fuller's circus. You lot prefer to keep the oddities from the world, while Mr. Fuller was hell-bent on laying them bare for the world to see. You say you're doing for the good of humanity, and Mr. Fuller was doing it for the money. Despite 4409's impressive recollection ability spanning literal centuries, he refuses to speak any further on Mr. Fuller's circus. 4409 claims that he wishes for the memories he has made to die with him, that no one else should become aware of the knowledge he possesses on the horrid things that occurred in Herman Fuller's circus. 4409 is to be treated as non-threatening and kept in a standard low-security residential containment chamber at Site 66.